in the year 2007, in a town called Wynyard, Tasmania, there was a school. A quaint thing that had all the crude, kid-friendly wall art and cheap plants you could find. The only real item of note was a wooden pirate ship in place of an actual, normal playground. Pictured above is a real photograph of the school many years later. Abandoned. Forgotten. And yet, even before the gates were closed and locked, there are none that remember attending. There are fewer that remember entering. Table Cape, as it was called, existed in a hidden way. Its very name held by another school in the area nearby. So, what happened? Why was Table Cape erased? I lived across the road from the school when it still stood. An excitable but nervous kid, I knew it to be a meeting and hangout place for the other kids in the neighbourhood. But what I also remember is the feeling. With my friends, I ran about the oval, climbed onto the roof and played happily in the wooden pirate ship. But not once did I do so alone. Not once could I bring myself to stand on the empty basketball court alone, knowing the school's windows were watching me. Those windows. Blacked out windows that showed only glimpses of empty rooms. I remember the way my skin prickled, feeling like a warm, cold tar that filled my chest. I remember how my eyes watered, though not irritated. It was as if I might cry. I only looked through the windows once. Years ticked by. Glass cracked, wood rotted, and my mother never ceased to warn me from going to play at the creepy little school. But you were a kid once. We all were. So no doubt you can guess what my big brain self did. I continued to play there. And always the feeling was present. The cold, unattributed fear. I remember the back of the school was the worst. It was home to a second, larger oval that backed onto a forested creek. Dense woods flanked the whole backside of it. I never once, not even as an adult, got within 20 metres of those trees. The feeling intensified at the back oval, you see. With every step toward the forest, the fear grew worse and worse. A fear matched only by the glimpses inside of the school building. One of my friends, a blonde, feisty thing named Rebecca, lived on the same street I did. And she, as well as a few others, played with me at the school. We were all poor. Beck's parents seemed to always be acquiring animals through dubious means, in some foolish attempt to make money off of them. This was a family that kept a goat tied to a pole in their front yard so as to never need to mow. Suffice it to say, the goat, of course, was quickly taken by the appropriate authorities. But then there were the horses. Now I can still see them so clearly. Two mares, one dark brown and one white. Beck's family had gotten them somehow and thought it to be a good idea to house them at the old school. Cheaper than a gistment, I guess, and I suppose they thought the old ovals were just as good as any paddock. They weren't there very long. It was a Saturday and I, Halo 2 Spartan toy in hand, was sat on the school's old basketball court, playing action figures with my friend, Thomas. We did all the kiddie things that seem so foolish now, explosion sounds with our mouths, that one machine gun noise that, for some reason, girls just seem incapable of doing, and altogether just having a good time. Well, that is for two poor kids playing in the overgrowth of an abandoned school, that is. Over Thomas's shoulder, though, I made a point to watch the horses. 
the movie fan in me, hell, the amateur writer in me, wants to say that they galloped and pranced, looking majestic in a slow motion cinematic moment. But no, they just stood and ate grass, maybe looked up and around every so often, lazily swishing their tails now and then. Two lazy horses on a predictably lazy day. But it was then, as I turned back to play with my friend, the noise came. I don't suppose you've ever heard a horse scream. I wish there was a better word for it, because it's not exactly a scream. I guess the best way to describe it would be a kind of guttural, high-pitched, shrill whining. My friend and I shot up, ran over to the horses. Now, you might be expecting blood and guts and demons and madmen, creepy pasta crap galore. But no, there was nothing. The horses were gone. We ran circles around the school. Even Thomas ran over to the forest to see if they had run inside. But nothing. The horses had simply vanished. I suppose this isn't much of a story. No intro, conflict or resolution. But it's the only story I can say with all honesty is true. I want to add more, to fat it up and say that there was a demon inside the school or a kitty fiddler hiding in the forest. But that's the way with the unknown, I guess. Whatever happened at Table Cape didn't want to be found. As I think I mentioned, I went back there only once as an adult before it was demolished. An avid watcher of urban exploration at that point in my life, I figured it'd be fun to poke around the mystery of my childhood. But as I approached the dilapidated building, a ruin at this point, half swallowed by nature, the feeling came again. Years later, and strong as ever, I just couldn't step inside. No matter how much I wanted to, the fear kept me away. Graffiti now covered most of the building's exterior, and at least one window was smashed. But as I mustered my courage to peek inside, I found that, still, after a decade of being abandoned in a poor neighbourhood with no fences and no security, the interior was still untouched. Pristine. Perfect. The school was demolished a few years later, and now the site stands as an empty, unused lot, grass and shrub overtaking the former site of Table Cape. So to this day, the question is this. Why didn't anyone ever go inside? Why was Table Cape erased? G'day guys, I hope you enjoyed that story and thank you so much for giving it a listen. Remember, if you want some more scary stories, you can go to the Scary Stories for Late Nights playlist. Dusk Bowl has been a fantastic project to work on and remember, if you've got any fanfic or fan art or any just questions about the series, feel free to email me at duskbowl.fm at gmail.com. I love every single one of you and you've made being a microtuber probably one of the best experiences of my life. I want to give special thanks to my patrons of course, being Lady Nevermore, Skulk Queen, Catherine Gordon, The Curator and Stephen Stevens. If you see them in the comments, please say good day. And to all of you, I bid you logs of love and shit shivers.